Hey there, Wondering Watchers. Welcome to this unboxing and flip through of Modern Love Tarot by Ethany. I have been eyeing this deck for a while to see if its uh, price of $45 ever goes on sale. It doesn't seem to, but I have seen this used in some other videos and I really like the diversity that is represented in these cards and it seems like in trying to find loved themed tarot cards it's kind of right on the mark with modern love tarot exploring the many facets of love so first off we're going to take a look at this box it is a magnetic clamshell box with some bright red on the interior and on the back it says the cards in the modern love tarot represent love in all of its glory including diverse representations of family love and people this deck can help people navigate the relationships with themselves and the people they love in their lives whether they need help healing from past relationships navigating current ones or finding a new lasting new one okay so here it says the art is by lucy morningstar so let's take a look at what's inside here okay so here is this really big well not big in terms of its physical uh size but it's pretty thick guidebook um it's a color guidebook um i think it's about 350 pages so let's see what we have here so we have contents it goes through introduction tarot spread major arcana then we get into the minors with the cups swords pentacles wands and let's see what we have here we have spread for what's the future of my relationship with the five card spread so strengths challenges lessons um within the relationship lessons of the other person oh you, the lessons you learn lessons the other person will learn and the future of the relationship so there's that spread will they come back six card spread interesting maybe i will use that will it zoom in here nope there maybe i'll use it for one of my readings and then finding the one tarot spread interesting so we have here um about the person okay so uh, about the person you're going to meet where you're going to meet how a person who is going to help you meet this person and when you're going to meet them okay oh there's more is the relationship over six card tarot spread so it gets into energy surrounding the relationship uh work you need to do to mend it work your partner needs to do to mend the relationship what you need to let go of what your partner needs to let go of and what requires healing in the relationship okay oh there's even more there's self-love tarot spread so what part of myself needs some love how can i be kinder to myself how can i bring more love into my life what expectation needs releasing and what gift can i share with the world is this gonna focus there okay is there any more no so here we have the different uh applications and the meaning so you have a general love meaning a single and loving it meaning a ready for love and dating meeting when it's a committed relationship when this relationship is struggling and when it's the end okay so yeah that seems to be for all of them so seems like pretty in depth um pretty in depth meaning applications going on here so let's see if it does it for even the minor arcana it does so here what else do we have it's pretty much 
I like that. I like the fact that the cards are kind of take up a whole page in color, even the minor arcana. And so you don't have to like, like today I, I went to the DMV um, and I had another uh, deck with me that I just got and it has on it, like, you know, the color version of the card. So I don't have to bring the whole deck and kind of look at the card and see the visual of it when I'm trying to see what the creator intended with the, you know, the illustration in terms of its meaning. So pretty much um, this is gonna be a really long read. Um, when I do the deck interview tarot reading at the end of this video, I will, um, I'll go through the specific cards that I pull for that reading and then also go through the guidebook and see kind of what it is for those cards so you get a, a taste of what the guidebook is going to say. Okay, so let's take a look at these cards. So you have this Join the Free Modern Love Tarot Companion course. Interesting. And there's another uh, spread, Interview Oh, interview your new tarot deck. Well, I guess I'll do this this specific uh, spread. Look, so I'll go over this at the end because I'm going to be doing this spread. So I'm gonna put this over here. And there is a card at the end. Love is beautiful in all its forms. And then basically it's um, from Ethne making sure that there's like uh, like, like kind of like a quality check to make sure the deck is fine to follow on uh, Instagram, hashtag modern love tarot. Where does it go in there? Does it show? Nope. I guess I'm gonna have to mess with the settings on here. Okay, so you can see these cards. They have this uh, gold edging and this kind of like gold foil on the back with hearts and it looks like bees. Looks like bees, pentacles, swords, and wands and cups. So I really, I really like the, the shine effect to it. This is, I believe, 350 GSM cardstock and it's pretty, pretty big card uh, you can see with the palm of my hand and actually I have the pulp tarot deck right here so I can do it side by side to see there is a little bit of a size difference for these cards so I would say the pulp tarot is the most um, it's like the typical tarot card size most common that I have okay so let's do the close-up flip through of this deck. So we have here the Fool. Will it, there it goes. And it looks like this person is in a, a museum doing some type of maybe love ritual. Um, let's see here. Do I want it? Yes, I'll put it down this way. Then we have the magician and you have the kind of a uh, cup of wine you got the pentacle sword and wands I would say the background with the drapes is not as like a uh, nature um, like lush garden type of environment as the traditional magician card and even for the full like the concept of um, like taking a leap of faith and almost falling off of a cliff that's not necessarily represented here so we'll see how much these cards actually visually kind of match up with the writer weight uh smith um imagery so we have here the high priestess and it looks like you have at least bookshelves like the black and white bookshelves as opposed to um, the black and white columns in the traditional high priestess. There is 
seems like no water represented. Perhaps the blue curtains are supposed to kind of give you the feel of the water that's in the traditional high priestess. Um, but you've got some pomegranates here um, with the empress. It's, I would say kind of still has the feel of like nature, more green as opposed to like the kind of yellow aspect of the sun kind of brightening up things, a little bit darker than traditional uh, empress, more emphasis on the um, like a pregnancy going on here. You have here the emperor. Um, actually, in the traditional empress, <laughs> in the traditional empress, there's like a waterfall, kind of like a flowing waterfall that's behind the empress, kind of to me indi di indicating like um, that there's emotions that um, can at time be overflowing and raging, but the empress is kind of just chill and relaxed there. With the emperor and the tra traditional uh, Rider Waite Smith imagery, there is like a little stream kind of flowing behind the emperor. It's not a lot of water, but at least indicates there is like some emotion there that is kind of at least um, tamed and controlled. So here, this is more, it looks like, uh, focused on like the strategizing. Um, and mental planning. Here we have the Hierophant. So totally not like the traditional card. Um, the traditional card, there's a couple of kind of people bowing down in front of the Hierophant. Um, I'm not sure if these represent keys. Are, they, are these keys? Do they look like keys? Can I get there any zoom? on that because those could be keys i guess definitely there are um there's keys in the hierophant kind of like indicating um the hierophant would provide like knowledge and to provide you the keys of um you know the path you want to go down you know once you are at the place where you can actually accept those keys and like um have responsibility for those so here we have the lovers Definitely, you know, I'm kind of pointing out the things where this is different from the traditional Rider Waite Smith imagery, but part of the reason why I bought this deck is because it's not traditional. Um, you have, um, you know, it appears to be like um, a same sex relationship, which is definitely not uh, represented, it, represented in the traditional deck. But I would say the kind of concept of the garden is there, um, the concept of a, not only. Yeah, like a physical connection for sure. And it seems like there's like a snake kind of going around. Um, there seems to be a tattoo on this person's arm. And it, oh, there it is. There's like the traditional lovers where there's like an like an angel kind of overseeing, um, overseeing two people. Uh, and I think that's, is that like a chameleon? No, that's part of the snake. That makes sense, okay. So you have here the chariot. This is, a, to me, kind of, you don't have the physical like boxing around the chariot, but I think that this pathway here kind of gives you a visual of kind of being like boxed in a little bit of, bit of production. Maybe the puffy sleeves on this dress is supposed to be indicative of the shoulder pads of the chariot. Um, but I think it's interesting that these dogs are on leashes because the traditional chariot, there are no actual like reins um, that are controlling the sphinxes. It's kind of like the uh, chariot driver is using his will to kind of get the sphinxes to um, pull him in the direction he wants to go. So here we have the strength card. So you've got the, the lion and the the maiden, multiple lions and the maidens. The hermit, you've got a person in a cape and lantern and hills. It's not as wintry as the traditional one, but maybe the cape can give off that um, like visual reminder of it. You have here the wheel of fortune. So 
So here, this justice card, and it, here you've got like this mediator or a counselor. Um, in the background, you can see there is someone, like a statue here, that's like the justice with holding a balance and maybe a sword up there. The hanged man. This is the interesting concept of it, where they're just like laying upside down on their bed. Um, and I think, is that a phone over there? Is that? It's kind of like a little bit disconnected from others, voluntarily disconnected because the person could just pick up the phone if they wanted to. And we have the death card here. I think this is very different from the traditional. It doesn't really show like the, um, maybe the candles are supposed to be representative of the new dawn ahead, um, the new day, and the butterflies here kind of indicating a transformation. I don't think this card does a good, uh, well, I don't see how it's representing like the different um, ways that you kind of deal with change or loss. The traditional death card has um, multiple people on on the card reacting to death coming on um, coming through on its white horse, kind of showing that you know some are accepting of death, some like kind of beg and negotiate things not to change, some are, deny it, and some just kind of accept it with a sense of wonder. So this doesn't really convey that those concepts. So it does seem so far you have to have at least. Um, a working knowledge of the tr traditional writer um, weight system, unless these are totally different uh, meetings, but pretty sure, does it say it here? Um, well, I guess when we get to the um, tarot reading, go through the meanings, we'll see if it is supposed to be similar to the traditional one. So here we have temperance, and there's three people in this. Um, you can see parents are helping the child mix mix things together you've got like this angel on the right is it gonna get in is it going it's gonna focus is it gonna focus maybe not so you've got this little kids art on the wall of the angel that's in the traditional temperance card but I do think that like the you can see the mom here is helping maybe it's the mom I'm assuming it's the mom maybe it's the babysitter maybe it's an older sister don't know but helping the child like balance the uh, bottle of milk, it seems to kind of. So there is that concept of balance and then the um, tabletop concept of like land, like solid land, and then you've got the liquids pouring together. But, you know, again, we'll look at the guidebook for this. Here we have the devil, looks like a dominatrix. I guess that is, you know, very similar you're missing the people here that would be in those chains but maybe in this version of the tarot deck the people were able to kind of remove the change themselves and get out of the situation so here we have the tower and this person seems to be nicely dressed um, and kind of on solid ground as opposed to the two people that are traditionally falling out of, falling out of the tower um, so here you got the star. Uh, there's two people in it instead of one person, but they're both kind of like pointing up to the different constellations, possibly kind of that's supposed to be indicative of balance, um, but definitely not like the traditional star. Here we have the moon. Um, it looks like you have like the wolf and the dog here and the moon and instead of like a like crayfish you have a person kind of emerging from the water and maybe they can make their own path through those um through those hills and you have the sun here with a child smiling child so somewhat similar you have the judgment card and there is you know someone kind of is that person like hugging themselves why does they're oh holding out a hand holding out a hand with a like like a charm that looks like a heart and an angel 
So the concept of like being reborn, rising from crypts, uh, people rising from crypts, that's not being shown here. You have the world card. So I could see this person's kind of dancing. Maybe the, um, the fabric is supposed to be indicative of like the kind of wreath that the traditional um, world card shows. So here with the cups, we have the ace of cups, it's a cup. You have two of cups, you got, uh, you can see these people kind of enjoy each other's company. Why is this? I'm gonna see if I can get this just to like focus a little bit better. This, this, there. Okay, so yeah, these people seem to enjoy each other's company and you can see there's like these two birds up here. You got these partying three of cups going on. And you've got this four of cups. This is interesting. You can see this person's not having a great time. This person's a little bit withdrawn. These people are like, let's keep the party going. Um, so I can see the traditional four of cups. Like this person is the only person without a cup and not even looking at the cup being offered. So five of cups, um, definitely different imagery, but it looks like a, a coffin and RIP, so you know some, there's some kind of loss. It's reflective of like a, an actual death, even though that's not what the traditional card is, like typically indicates. We have the six of cups here, and it looks like this person is looking in a reflection and seeing maybe their inner child or their younger self. Um, in the traditional six of cups, there's definitely um, two people well, actually, there's three people, uh, and there's like physical handing off of something, um, assistance being depicted. Here we have the Seven of Cups. So it seems like all these people are offering different things to this person who has their eyes closed. Maybe they're to guess which one they want, like, you know, pick a cup. Well, I guess that's a good way to look at it. It's like, hey, pick a cup, but don't look. You have to choose with your heart. You have the eight of cups here. This person looks bummed that they have to move. Maybe they already moved. You can see there's a key here, keychain. Looks like a heart keychain. Nine of cups. This person looks very happy. Ten of cups family here and I like the different color balloons similar to the rainbow and the traditional ten of cups or representative of the rainbow and the ten of cups we have the page of cups here I do like that look of fascination with the fish that jumped out of this child's cup we have this knight of cups um, and I'm assuming the person with the cup is the knight and he's got these like his arm around two people. And then the Queen of Cups here. There's less ornamentation in this Queen of Cups, and a very small cup compared to the traditional version. You have the King of Cups on this sailboat. And I think it's almost it, well, it doesn't matter that it's not the same, but especially for this one. Although the first thing I thought was this person's on a boat, whereas the King of Cups traditionally is like, looks like he's on a cement throne and kind of like having balance when the like water around him is like uh, uneven, unsteady. But here I do like it. I mean, basically King of Cups has to just ride the emotions and we are in the swords now. We have the Ace of Swords. I do like the the arch of books indicating like knowledge information two of swords so typically there's only one person in the two of swords and I'd be interested to see what this is about because for me the two of swords is about indecision and kind of trying to look at well I guess it's looking at the information when really you should be following 
uh, it doesn't really the information doesn't really matter and I guess they're both looking at information up on their phone but I guess they're not making a decision about the relationship but by not deciding they're deciding to stay in it we have the three of uh, swords I think this is a great representation of the traditional three of swords we have the four of swords and this person is just chilling this decent representation of the four of swords i would say it looks more positive in this version which i like yeah the five of swords here um and i think this is a really good representation of the concept of like really just not knowing when to walk away from a lose-lose situation and seeing how people are like being affected by this and the traditional five of swords i feel like there's a specific person who's ego is involved and it's kind of clear from the imagery and they actually take joy in the fact that others are like defeated uh so that's a little bit different in this one so here we have the six of swords this person is by their lonesome it's kind of lacking for me the imagery of showing that there are other people involved and in actually supporting helping to support this move forward seven of swords um it's typically the liar stealer cheater so it's kind of like a walk of shame um or maybe sneaking out for the night before it's even started we have the eight of swords here um i do like that there is like this heart-shaped lock and the key is ar around this person's necklace indicating they have the ability to make a difference to unlock it here we have the uh, oh, sorry the nine of swords um and i do see from that like this the look on this person's face it's more of like caught in thought um being caught by all those swords but the despair and the concept of like nightmares and fear it's not really showing through for me um this person could like maybe be in shock or just like be even just you know fixated on some one thing but in terms of almost like daydreaming could be so here we have ten of swords and it says divorce cert certificate here so that's a interesting interesting way to depict the ten of swords um again there's no like concept well maybe the door being kind of open is that concept of a new day ahead but this person is like fixated almost well are they fixated on the um center or are they fixated on the door okay so here we have the page of swords <laughs> with this little kid that face on that page of swords that's some that's a great face for like the page of swords sometimes i see the page of swords someone is just like really bratty and just doesn't care about like <laughs> whether or not those birds will get caught in that kite so that's a great face for it here we have the knight of swords it seems like a decent depiction of it queen of swords it's pretty dark and uh looks like this the wispiness doesn't really show the same kind of clear headedness as the traditional ones and the color is very dark in comparison here we have the king of swords it looks like this person is what a, like a student teacher principal looks like some kind of establishment there an artist right we're into the pentacles so we have the ace of pentacles here the two of pentacles be interesting to know what that is supposed to be is that like um, a cell phone a kite we'll see We've got the three of pentacles it's a decent depiction of it you got three people got three pentacles got the four of pentacles uh typically there's only one person in the four of pentacles so um i think it's interesting that this person's got their arm crossed like that concept of a like being closed off and blocked is kind of showing off wonder what this other person is supposed to kind of indicate looks like that person's like mad or blaming them all right we have here the five of pentacles and it looks like there's someone wearing a wedding dress trying to get into a chapel interesting you know, six of pentacles 
So looks like some kind of party, concert, fair, Renaissance fair, we'll see. Seven of Pentacles, typically there's one person in Seven of Pentacles, it looks like there's two. It looks like this person's like upset and that person's got their arm on, their hands on their shoulders, trying to console them or talk to them. We have the Eight of Pentacles. It's uh, also typically shown with one person, but here, this is the Modern Love Tarot deck, so it's kind of indicating like how you actually put in effort um, in your relationship, kind of physically supporting each other, paying attention to the things you care about. You have the Nine of Pentacles, uh, it's pretty similar to the typical Nine of Pentacles. You've got the bird here, um, got the person in the garden. I wonder if there's a snail anywhere on the ground. And the Ten of Pentacles. So you've got the multi-generational uh, family going on. You have the Page of Pentacles, loving the outdoors with their dog. You have the Knight of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, not in a garden, but definitely uh, spending time on herbs, garden um, spices. And the King of Pentacles. Uh, and it looks like, like manual labor is being depicted. Um, things that are sturdy with, sturdy with this woodwork. And I think that's like supposed to be like a cow. And here we are in the wands. We have the Ace of Wands, Two of Wands. Um, it's typically one person as opposed to two, but what are they doing? What's going on here? Are they, is this person getting the digits or I'm gonna see if I can, what's happening there? Is it, are they just holding hands? No, maybe getting the digits. Okay. Uh, so planning a date maybe. Here we have the three of wands, so exploration, kind of getting a, like a surveying the area. We have the four of wands here. Five of wands, it looks like this person is not happy and this person is like, and oh, what are you gonna do about it, hmm? So packed car, some kind of either like disagreement, uh, this person's leaving, this is the Six of Wands, so uh, overcoming obstacles, victories, celebrations, person in a, a wheelchair here playing basketball. We have the Seven of Wands. Typically it's like one person kind of backed into a corner with six wands at them, but this is kind of like, it's almost inner conviction and it's showing that there are people that do kind of will have that same belief or inner conviction and them kind of finding each other. Here we have the eight of wands, which typically doesn't have any people. We have the nine of wands, which typically is only one person, but you can see this, per this person must be the mom and it's just like worn down, just like I don't even care anymore. And the 10 of wands and this person is like got deadlines, schedules, needs to make things happen, a little bit overwhelmed. You have Page of Wands. I think that superhero like outfit is super adorable and with a unicorn and the dragon, it's like, I'm gonna make things happen. I'm gonna make magic happen. And we have here the Knight of Wands. Uh, interesting outfit going on, maybe indicative of like traveling to different locations, picking up souvenirs or articles of clothing. Queen of Wands, showing off their physical form, not afraid to uh, expose their skin. Bit, uh, what's the word? Definitely drawing attention. And here the King of Wands, wow, that definitely, definitely draws attention. And they're like, I'm gonna do my own thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and see how these cards shuffle. 
We'll do the side shuffle. That's nice. Let's see if it's going to be able to fit in my hands. Yeah, it's a, it's a little stiff, but not too stiff. And I feel like this will be pretty, once it gets some more um, action. Yeah, it's already kind of loosening up. Okay, so for my hands, which I don't know if I have, I have, <laughs> I have my hands. So for my hands, I can go ahead and shuffle them just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle these a bit more and then get into this um, this tarot deck interview. So I've gone ahead and shuffled up this deck pretty well and now we're gonna do this interview your new tarot deck reading. So it's five cards. The first one is what kind of reading will you excel at? Number two, what are your strengths as a tarot deck? Three, what are you here to teach me for? How can I connect best with you? And five, what card sums you up the best? So let's see what we have here. I'm just gonna shuffle these just a couple more times. Let's see what this new modern love tarot deck is all about for me. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it this way. Okay, so what kind of reading will you excel at? You have the Queen of Wands here. What are your strengths as a tarot deck? We have the Judgment card. Then we have, what are you here to teach me? Knight of Cups. How can I connect best with you? Two of Wands. And what card sums you up the best? Two of Cups. Okay, and so I'm just gonna look at the bottom deck for influencing energy, that little rascal Page of Swords. Okay, so let's take a look at this guidebook. So for for me, like this Queen of Wands, what kind of reading will you excel at? It's to me kind of like, how can you become like, like open up, be more adventurous, daring, confident, bold, tap into your sensuality, your sexuality, um, kind of step into your power and like not, not need anybody's permission type of thing. So let's see what it says for the Queen of Wands here. Queen of Wands, Queen of Wands, Queen of Wands. All right, so Queen of Wands. Oh, it's towards the back. Okay, so attention, acting, confidence, general love meaning. The Queen of Wands is a head turner. They may not be the most attractive person in the room, but they love themselves and never apologize for being themselves. And that in itself is magnetic. This is a perfect card for you to explore the aspects of yourself and how they play out in your relationships. You deserve attention, especially from those that you love. So for singles and loving it, do you realize the power that you have within you? You can attract the right people and situations into your life with a lot more ease than you may realize. Focus on self-care rituals that help you reclaim your power and understand just how amazing you are. For those ready for love dating, do you know what's really sexy? Confidence. When it glows out from the inside, people can't help but be attracted to you. If you're not feeling confident and are dating to fill the void up for validation, it's time to do that all important self-love work so that you can feel great even when you're alone. For those in committed relationships, are you acting like things are okay to keep up appearances when you're drowning inside? Find someone you can drop the act with and be honest. This card could also mean you're judging someone else's relationship on only what you see on the surface. Judgments need to be parked at the door right now. For struggling relationships, it says begging your partner for attention and affection is frustrating. If you're one step away from screaming, look at me, at the top of your lungs, maybe you need to stand up and speak out for your needs. No one puts you in a corner. The end. This card often comes up at this point in a relationship when someone is not acting right. Maybe you've noticed a personality change or you don't even recognize your partner anymore. If you feel like something is off, trust it, pay attention, and do a little digging. So I think the end is kind of like the end of the relationship. Okay, so what are your strengths as a tarot deck? We have this 
a judgment card here. So I think it's kind of maybe helping people to um, recognize that it's okay to let things go, that they're, you know, oh, this person is in it, like in it, in a tomb. They're in their own grave almost. So that they can kind of um, come out from whatever shame pit, guilt pit, despair pit that they're in and kind of leave things behind and join the world. So let's see what it says for judgment here. Judgment, 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 judgment. Okay, it's rebirth, rejuvenation, responsibility, general love meaning. It's a time of rebirth and a renewed sense of energy and purpose in your relationships. It's time to follow through with the words you say. Be the change you want to see in the world. You've taken stock of what is and isn't working, and through that, you've come out with more freedom and space. Make use of the injection of motivation. Single and loving it. If you've been harshly judging the people in your life, this is a call from spirit to knock it off. You don't know what someone else is dealing with from the outside. If you're struggling with your inner critic, it's time to get some support and new tools to maintain good mental health. Ready for love and dating. Free yourself from all the things and people that are a short-term distraction and put your energy and effort into something real. If you've been a bit shallow in your dating choices or haven't been really showing up in your relationships, it's time to stop. Make an effort and respect yourself and the people you're spending time with. Committed relationship, the judgment card appearing in an established relationship, reading, ask each person to take accountability for their actions. It can also be a sign somebody will soon be judging you, perhaps in a court of law or in a counseling session. There is nowhere for you to hide. It's better to deal with everything once and for all. For those in struggling relationship, it's time to stop bitching and moaning about your significant other being useless and do something about it. Everyone is sick of hearing about the same problems over and over again. People will stop listening when you only complain instead of doing anything to empower your life. Stop bitching about your problems and start talking to your partner. The end, you know exactly what you need to do. It's probably going to be hard, but you can no longer know the, ignore the truth. Judgment is also a sign to get the right legal counsel in your corner if there are children and assets involved in your breakup. Okay, so here, what are you here to teach me? We have the Knight of Cups. So possibly leading with your heart, um, being open to romance, being open to all types of love, all versions of love, um, being creative, following your heart, wearing your heart on your sleeve. So let's see what you want to teach me with this Knight of Cups here. Romantic, sensitive, affectionate. For the general love meaning, we have whether you are embracing your inner Knight of Cups or about to meet one, you are in for a heck of a wild romantic ride. This knight is a romantic that acts based on their heart. They, they the words to say, and maybe they have or they know, it says they, they the, they the, okay. Um, they know the words to say and what to do so you feel deeply seen. One thing about this night, they chase their heart's desire so they might not stick around too long. When something else pulls their heartstrings, they will they will be chase their next they will chase their next love interest. Single and love, loving it. It's time to delve into your artistic side and creatively express your heart and emotions. Take the, an inspirational trip to your favorite place in nature and sketch what you find or take some photos. Try an art challenge, painting, photography, something creative take daily action on behalf of your heart ready for love dating a wise person once said thou shall not put all thy dating eggs in one basket okay that may have just been me but there is a lot of truth there don't put the pressure on just one connection you don't have to jump in the sack with everyone or date loads of people but keep your options open until you're sure just make sure everyone knows what's going on while you're enjoying why you enjoy dating. In a community relationship, it's time for a romantic getaway. Pack those bags and get going to a place for some intimate romance and a dash, a dash of adventure. It doesn't have to be exorbitant. You may both love camping, for example. What this card is saying is to take a romantic adventure together to form memories and bonding experiences. Struggling relationship. There probably hasn't been a lot of horizontal tango in your relationship. The spark has gone out or someone is fanning their flame elsewhere. The Knight of Cups has to come to rekindle has to come to rekindle the fire. Remember what drew you to your partner in the first place and take some small steps to get your relationship back on track. The end 
be your own knight of cups. You have to be the protector of your own heart. No one else will do it for you. Relationship boundaries are essential. Act on behalf of your well-being as if and as if you're doing it for your best friend. Take no shit and say no when something is not okay. Okay. So here, how can I connect best with you? Uh, meaning the deck. We have the two of wands. So basically, um, I'm interested to see what this is about here. It's kind of like planning, um, you know, following that spark of interest um, and kind of seeing where things lead. Traditionally, a two of wands is kind of like contemplating and planning and imagining things, not necessarily ready to make things happen. So let's see what this two of wands is saying when it comes to um, connecting. Potential connection, restlessness. So the general love meaning, the two of wands in a love relationship. Why is this not focusing? Okay, so we'll just take a look at this cute little couple here. Um, two of wands in a love and relationship tarot reading has the vibration and energy of clicking with someone. It could feel like you've known them from a past life and instantly recognize each other on a soul level. Any interactions and in love you're experiencing around this time come with this extra energy that's in anticipation in the air. For those single and loving it, the world is your oyster, so get out there and experience it. You may feel like there isn't enough of you to go around or time to do everything, so make actionable plans so you can use this time of potential to your advantage. For those ready for love dating, you're excited because things are going well with someone. And two of Wands in a dating reading is a welcome sign as a spark and starting to get fanned into a flame. There could be something lasting between you. Enjoy the adventure along the way. In a committed relationship, your default setting is no longer serving you. The Two of Wands is calling you to look at alternative ways of approaching things in your relationship. Try something new when it comes to how you communicate and share what you need with your loved ones. In a struggling relationship, Restlessness in, a rela in relationships doesn't just come out of nowhere. If you've been distracted by your device, work, friends, or something more destructive to your relationship, this is a call to cut it out. If your other half is the one who's checking out, bring it up sooner rather than later. And for the end, the door has closed for you and a chapter of your life, no matter how small or large it was, has finished. The good news is there's so much more out there than what you just lost. This card is a reminder that one day, when you've had some time to deal with things, you will find love again. So considering this is connecting with the deck, I'm assuming it's just the general love meaning and like the best way to connect with it is kind of whenever I feel like using it, however I feel like using it, however I'm drawn to it, do it. All right, so what card sums you up the best? You got this two of a cup, this cute light couple, um, basically, I think it's kind of like this love connection is like, that's what it's all about. Getting people together, finding what, um, you know, the commonalities, their compatibilities, what kind of the spark and magic in each person. So here, two of cups, true love partnership, balanced exchange, general love meaning. The card of true love is always welcome in a tarot reading. This positive card shows that you have a good balance of give and take in your relationships and that solid foundations are being laid for the long haul. Single and loving it, not all love is romantic. When single and fabulous people draw this card, it points to spending more time with good friends. Go out to dinner and a movie with your gal pals instead of hitting the dating apps. Ready for love dating? If you have met someone new recently, this may be the real deal. If you are still looking, this card is a reminder not to settle. Find someone on your level. You deserve the same commitment, energy, and enthusiasm that you will bring to the relationship. In a committed relationship, you have a solid relationship. People often look to you for love advice, and it's a hopeful sign that love can last. You know that it takes work, and so does your other half, but you need to keep making the conscious decision to put in the effort. Schedule a sexy date or some quality time with your partner and keep the flames of passion stoked. Struggling relationship? Partnerships can work if communication isn't open. Oh, sorry, can't work if communication isn't opened. If you are the one who has shut down, spend some time contemplating what has led you to this place and see if you can take some action to move forward. If it's your partner, it's time to have a difficult conversation. When it's the end, instead of calling your ex and regretting it later, get a breakup pal, a trusted friend or two. 
that can text or phone that you can text or phone when you feel tempted. Bring in the cavalry to hold you back. Just because it's familiar doesn't mean it was good. Don't waste your time. Okay, and then last one, the uh, influencing energy. This uh, this I don't know if it's bratty, page of swords, but we'll see. So I take that to be like this could be a card of like you know influencing this reading. It's curiosity, uh, like kind of something new, something fun, something it wants to learn, wants to master quickly. That's kind of how I feel about tarot decks when I get it. It's like I just want to figure it out, you know, like want to see how it resonates, see what it says, like get into it right away. So let's see here what this page of swords says. Ideas, communication, questions, general love meaning. Expect news for yourself or the ones you love. There may be something you've been waiting to hear about, and this is a sign you've been wait wanting. Communication is vital for all relationships to thrive so be very mindful of what and how you communicate with those around you single and loving it you are enjoying getting to know people with common interests and social situations the more you discover about people in their lives the more you're getting to know yourself when the page of swords arrives in a reading it points to forming new lasting friendships ready for love dating don't be afraid to Ask the important questions when you're getting to know someone. Get real about the type of relationship that you want and what the deal breakers are. If you're hiding your desires to settle down and have children because you think you'll be able to change the other person's mind, you're in for disappointment. Committed relationship. News will be arriving that affects those you love. Consider carefully the information coming in and try not to react thoughtlessly. Allow yourself time to respond. Otherwise, you may find that you say something you wish you hadn't. This card is also connected to news of pregnancy or children being added to the family. Struggling relationship. This page can be incredibly immature and unable to communicate very well. If you're in the relationship with someone like this, you may find the conversations quickly become unreasonable and are left unresolved. Some communication coaching may be required for the relationship to get back on track. The end. Put the phone down and don't send that text message or email. You'll regret it if you do. You want to communicate with your ex right now to make them see your point of view or understand how much they hurt you? By doing so, you're going to experience more pain every time they respond. Interesting. Okay. So this is what I have for you. If you have any comments about the deck or suggestions for spreads or readings with these cards, I'd love to hear about it. We'll see you next time. Take care.